Hello, hello guys, welcome back to another video. My name is George Corbiano and today in front of us we've got the beautiful, absolutely stunning and I'm so excited, GT4 RS. This is by far my favorite car that I've driven to date and I've driven a lot of cars. But God, first of all, let me just walk around this thing because it's absolutely stunning. I mean, just have a look at it. The color shark blue shark baby blue something like that it's absolutely gorgeous and it's got the white stack package which means it's got a lot of carbon a lot of uh, extra carbony bits it's lightweight it's just phenomenal the 20 inch wheels the carbon intakes oh you can see the engine in the back here well the air but yeah the airbox and the uh, brace Ah, but we'll get into that a little bit later i mean just look at this bloody thing <laughs> with the um folded uh arches here to aid for aerodynamics or whatever i don't know gt4s logo absolutely stunning you got the um the vents here on the fenders on the on the hood oh it's so 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 cool i cannot explain to you how excited i am for this car and to drive in to experience it well i've been driving gt4s i've been driving the living shit out of it for the past few days uh porsche gb were uh, super super kind to lend me this car and allow me to create content with it for the past uh, few days almost a week so shout out to them awesome uh, awesome people there for letting me have a go on this beauty and hopefully more cars to come from them but anyway so for those of you who are not familiar this thing is rocking the same engine as the GT3 RS, which is the uh, four litre uh, flat six, pushing 500 horsepower and 450 Newton meters of torque. It revs to 9,000 RPM, which make this, oh, the sounds it makes at 9,000 RPM are hard to describe. It literally sounds like a motorsports car. It's so loud on the inside. And I see why a lot of people were complaining about it being too loud on the interior because I get it, after 6,000 RPM, this thing is super, super, super loud on the inside. However, I love it because it's an RS. It's supposed to be angry, brutal, stiff, disgusting, basically, to drive and um, be around. However, I love it. I love it. Is it daily? Absolutely not. Would I daily it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous and I absolutely love it. So, in here, I've got the key. And uh, obviously I'm gonna unlock him. But what I wanted to show you is the um, frunk because surprisingly for this car, given it's an RS, it's got quite a bit of space. So in here, if I press this, it's got a latch, carbon bonnet, look at that. And in here, you've got quite a bit of luggage. I've got this bag here and I've got another suitcase in there and my hoodie and some cleaning products for the car. Like you can fit probably two uh, carry-on style suitcases and some extra stuff in the front here got a Porsche logo in there got a vents oh, look at it look at it spaceship <laughs> spaceship car and to close it you lower it it's so light this bonnet is so light and then you just press right there and then it's locked and then the same thing for the rear trunk press the button here and this whole thing just lifts up and you've got more storage i mean it's not a lot i mean i'll put my uh, my phone in here for you to understand the size it's not a lot but you can definitely fit some suitcase in here or some bags it goes all the way down there down here you got hookup points it's good and obviously the air box in right there which is ah, we're going to talk about that later and to close this same thing just slam it down well slam it you can't really slam it because it's got hydraulic uh, pumps but yeah look at this thing you can see the diffuser there this is an actual functional diffuser it actually does things because it goes all the way down uh and to the front of the car oh my gopro almost fell off my face yeah look at it it's just so nice it's got a backup camera you can see it right here and it's dirty there you go it's not anymore um yeah i mean it's fucking phenomenal sorry for my french but this thing is so exciting it's so exciting of course you've got the central lock wheels the nuts sorry Oh man, it's got the steel brakes on this um, on this press car and frankly I am glad it's got a steelies because I'm not taking on track and uh, carbon ceramics on the road are kind of shit they, they need to be really warm to perform uh, perform great so 
I'm glad it's good as steel wheels because it's, it works perfectly in the city or on, and on B roads. So yeah, I am very, very excited about this. And what is here? Is this a scratch? No, it's just dirt. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but the car is minging. I washed this morning, but look at the weather. It rained on the way here and I was on the motorway and it's disgusting right now. But if I step back, you won't be able to tell. Perfect. And this is for a, for a thumbnail. <laughs> Actually, no, this is going to be for the thumbnail. Check that out. Boom. <laughs> Anyhow. Oh, let's start with the um, passenger side. Mind you, I've got some stuff in here because I'm recording sound for the POV that's going to come. And we've got super specialized sound, uh, sound recording devices in here so you can hear every detail. We've got so much carbon in this car. We've got the um, door seal plaque here with the GD4S. We've got carbon here. We've got these uh, grab straps, handles to open the door. A little bit of storage in here. A little bit of storage in here. The beautiful uh, carbon fiber uh, cup holder situation thing that we go here. Press these two. Do that. And, oh, do that. And then obviously you got your cup holders. You can uh, adjust them. Inflate your drink and tighten them up. There you go. It's not ideal, but it does the job. Um, and yeah, on the passenger side, that is about it. Obviously, we got the YSAC logo here, the carbon buckets, but I'll show you more uh, on the other side because it's better. But yeah, that's about it on the interior, on the passenger side. There's not much as you would expect. Obviously, got the one button for the door switch, and that's it. Door switch, window switch. Close that, baby. Look at that. Carbon. Oh, look at it. There's so much carbon in this car. Everything is carbon. It's insane. I love it. I don't think the uh, normal version without the YSAC package comes with as much carbon. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, this one's got a lot of carbon. Same thing on here. Carbon here. Got the Bose sound system. Window switches. Door seal. Uh, black. We got the button for the trunk and the front. And of course the carbon bucket seats. I've got a pillow, literally took it from my desk chair, from my office chair, to put it in here because these seats are so stiff and so uh, quote unquote uncomfortable for longer journeys that it's actually a pain in the ass, quite literally, um, to drive around London because it's so bumpy. Uh, the roads are so bad in London, it's just not ideal. So I've been using that pillow to basically aid my back. Uh, it's mainly because I got a bad back from uh, working out <laughs> uh, back in my youth. <laughs> it's not that I'm old, but anyway. So I'm using that to aid my uh, spinal uh, issues. Um, in here, same as before, Wysak uh, logo, carbon fiber, Alcantara type situation. Super nice and super plus. Nice, super nice. Leather on the seats, on the bolsters. Alcantara steering wheel, which I absolutely love. No buttons and there's nothing on it, just the paddle shifters. And the switches, this is where you put the key in. That's how you start the car. <laughs> the um, uh, light switch, two pedals, handbrake here. And that's it. Obviously in the back, you got a like half roll cage. This is my uh, mic setup, don't worry about that. You got the brace here, the roll cage here, Alcantara roof lining. You can see the air box right there, it's literally right behind your ear like your head is right here oh you can hear so much um so let me step in real quick oh. okay so in here alcantara steering wheel with the yellow uh, 12 o'clock marking which i absolutely love so the chrono package with the little uh dial watch in the middle this is your whole infotainment system that's all you get you got buttons which i absolutely love and listen to this Yes, Porsche. Yes, buttons. We love buttons. And I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's all you get. If I get a key and I uh, take it here and put in the whoop and I give it a little twist, GT4 RS in the screen. So this is a screen, this is analog, and this is analog. I give it one twist, the ignition comes on. Uh, all the bells and whistles are gonna turn on, basically. Um, the screen here will turn on. It's a bit dirty, my, uh, sorry about that. And if I turn it on, obviously the car fires up. Beautiful, beautiful sound. 
turn on the um, exhaust. Let me go outside quickly. As you can hear, it's pretty loud in here. It's a uh, stock exhaust, but it's still pretty bloody loud. So, uh, yeah. Um, now back on the inside. So you can actually hear what I'm saying. I'm gonna close the door. Oh, lower the uh, fans a little bit. In the infotainment system, yeah, infotainment system, there is a much. That's all you get. Sound settings, media, phone navigation, maps, and car. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's completely useless. However, if you have a phone and a cable, like an iPhone, or, and I'm not, I'm not sure about Android Auto. With an iPhone, you just obviously do that, and then immediately you get the uh, Apple CarPlay um, sync. No, oh, there you go. Get the Apple CarPlay sync and. Um, yeah, you can uh, chill and do your uh, Apple CarPlay uh, bits. Whether well, you got the music, you got all that jazz. So it's all fine and dandy. If you unplug it, it goes away immediately. I'm not sure if it's got it through Bluetooth. I didn't try to make it work and I didn't even uh, care about it because this car is meant to be driven, not fiddle with. And besides that, I mean, there isn't much. You've got this uh, infotainment uh, situation here. You can move with this lever. Got a Bluetooth maps navigation the trip let's see for the past 460 miles that i've had this car I've done 17 mpg which is not bad given i've driven a lot in the in the city in london and i've been ragging it a lot as well um but i tell you what it's it was saying 30 mpg when i was coming from reading to london so Reading is where Porsche GB is located and on the motorway driving normally 60 70 miles an hour whatever it, I got home doing 30 mpg which is insane so yeah it's basically an economy car if uh, your wife or girlfriend or mother or whatever um, is not allowing you to buy one because it's a waste of uh, money and the fuel just say that it's very economical because George said and show it this video you got the performance screen which shows the torque curve and then I think oh the other way never mind you can change the torque curve to power curve there you go which is same thing it shows you the power basically peaks at 8,000 9,000 rpm so you want to it's super linear you always want to push it basically and the torque curve peaks at 6,000 rpm I hope you can see that about 6,000 rpm and it goes all the way down to well, all the way up to 8,000 and then drops down a little bit but at 8,000 you already want to shift next screen is um, the temperatures for the oil and uh, the oil pressure and whatever that is and that's it that is it for the interior that is it so I say we uh, give it a couple of revs <laughs> and then we go for a drive so we don't get shouted at so if I put it in neutral apparently I'll be able to uh, rev it Shut up. Okay, that's it. And now we're gonna leave because we might get shouted at for revving it. <laughs> Not everybody's a car guy like us. So I'm gonna teleport to a nicer location and start the POV for you guys and I'll keep uh, commenting. So I'll see you in a second. So I figured I would start the uh, POV on the motorway well on a dual carriageway so you can hear the uh all the noises basically and tell you how this car feels to drive on a um, dual carriageway because it's not ideal but um that said we do have a wall right here what i'm gonna do is flick it to manual pdk uh sport exhaust on <laughs> insane 
and let me do another pull with the window up so you can hear just the induction noise what a thing just what a thing yeah this is the main selling point of this car for me anyway just the noise the drama behind it like sure it drives really well but the drama is just so good oh, so nice such a good car and uh you can't uh, pass a, uh, a tunnel overpass whatever and not not do that <laughs> it's uh, by law anyway put it back into uh drive actually now that i'm in drive and in sport pdk let me show you what is this guy doing uh well he's driving the speed limit as you should um let me show you how quickly i call this lane there's nobody so I'm running in fourth gear. If I just blip the throttle, I'm gonna do this when I blip the throttle so I can show you how quickly it downshifts from whatever gear to the gear that you want to. So, second gear, immediately. I think it's insane. And of course, in a typical London fashion, we've hit traffic. But I hope this sort of showcases to you how the noises are on the motorway, let me put in normal gearbox and close the valves how the normal sort of motorway driving um, noises and vibes are it's fairly loud in here you get quite a bit of road noise the engine being right behind you is quite noisy like you can hear all the clanks all the pistons <laughs> moving all the valves opening it's got a super lightweight flywheel so you always hear that sort of racket at low speed and even at fairly high speed I hear the little sh of the uh, low weight um, flywheel but like it's you get what you pay for it's a race car it's literally an rs it's as brutal as they get so you can't expect it to be nice and smooth and comfortable it's a weapon and it behaves like one so if you're not expecting this to be like a turbo s comfortable and cruisy then phenomenal <laughs> But yeah, would I daily this? Probably not, because it's horrendous. But then again, probably yes, knowing myself and how much I love aggressive, fun, exciting cars. But anyway, enough of that. Let's cut to a more exciting uh, Vero drive and uh, take it from there. So we are now on some uh, country lanes kind of thing in, the, um, in a village and to give you an impression of how this car is to drive around a slower paced environment like a country road village type situation I'm gonna just start a POV now let me adjust this a little bit there you go I start the POV now and basically let you guys uh, hear the noises of this car as we just uh, move at 28 miles an hour I love the downshifts of this thing. Even if you're going super slowly, the downshifts are just like, bam, bam. Like, we're gonna come to a standstill in a second, 3000 RPM. I'm just gonna, oh. <laughs> that sounds so good. It pisses me off how good it sounds. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And yeah, so if you keep this lever to the left side, you basically have a sequential style um, shifter for your PDK gearbox. That's very nice. I don't think he saw me. I think that was a Stinger. 911 Stinger or something like that. I look amazing. I got ignored, so that's nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this thing, as you can probably hear, makes a lot of noises. Right now it's in BDK Sport, so it's holding the, uh, the gears quite high or quite low, I guess. But if I put it in uh, BDK Sport, or in normal, sorry, and I close the valves it's not that loud like you're just chilling there's a lot of road noise wind noise I mean road noise to be fair it's got cup twos Michelin cup twos so they're quite sticky and hard um, but yeah this is uh, as loud as it gets in here it's really not that crazy when you're driving uh, slowly it's just normal 
I love the induction noises because when you um, when you're just chilling, then you tap the throttle, downshift. Do you hear those induction noises? Sounds so good. Sounds so good. Obviously, you've got to keep your BDK Sport and turn on the exhaust because you've got it. machine this is I absolutely love it I wish there wasn't so much traffic on a random uh, random day in the middle of a forest I don't know why there's so much traffic in here but they make do with what we've got oh, this guy's going away which is ideal for us to uh, prune it a little bit show you guys how this thing sounds ah, I can't wait such a good thing such a good thing Honestly, it's hard to explain how this feels to drive. It's it's like basically, if you've ever been in a go kart, this is as close as it gets to a go kart because it's so darty. It's so just wherever you point it, just goes immediately. There's no lag. There is nothing. The hydraulic steering, hydraulically assisted steering. I'm not exactly sure what the technology behind this uh, steering wheel is, but it's very good. It's very direct. Very sharp. And it's a beauty, honestly, it's a beauty to drive. Makes so many nice noises. Once you're on it, opens the intake valves or whatever, it sounds so good, listen. How good is that? I mean, come on, as a driver's car, this is basically a triple X movie, you know? <laughs> it's something you would find on a website that's orange and black. <laughs> It just sounds so bloody good. And I love this sequential style shifter. I love paddles, but this thing is just like... <laughs> what a machine. And then you, uh, you downshift and you just go... Bow. <laughs> Absolutely love this thing. And the fact that it's so uh, small, it's a 718 Cayman, it's so small, you fit in places, you're not worried you're gonna not fit in the country lanes, especially in the UK, as the roads are super narrow, um, and like the forest like this. Uh, whenever, whenever I'm driving like wider cars, sports cars, I'm always worried like, ah, let me, you know, take a extra easy and extra careful. Window down. <laughs> Jesus. 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 We're now in a village, so let's be respectful to the people. We're trying to have a chill afternoon. <laughs> but, ah, this thing. It's impossible for you not to put a smile on your face. It really is impossible. Sounds so good. It's so much fun to drive. Like, it's one of these cars that you don't even have to go fast to enjoy it. I'm doing 40 miles an hour now in this village, just normal in traffic. As you can see, there's a Corsa in front of me, and I'm just having so much fun. <laughs> uh, and also, one fun thing I forgot to show you is if you pull both paddles from the upshift and downshift, so if you hold them, both pulled, you can rev the car. Pretty cool. You don't really need to use the honk in this car. If something happens, just pull the paddles. <laughs> it's like basically driving a bike, riding a bike, I guess. 
is a lot of time you uh, you hear the bikers rev to signal. Oh, one thing about this car, it's super bouncy and it's super stiff. So like, it's pretty difficult when you go over pumps. It's quite uh, quite something. That was a nice Type R. I've never driven one of those, but I've heard they're uh, pretty fun. Uh, yeah, this thing is just chaos. This guy in front of me is really, uh, really afraid to uh, navigate the road. Maybe you should uh, try to speed up a little bit sad or do uh, 25, 30, whatever. But anyway, I can't be mad. I'm in this thing and it's just like, ah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> this thing, honestly, first time I got in it, when I picked it up from Porsche UK, I almost cried. It's so nice. It's such a lovely car. So nice to drive. Sounds so good. Squeaky brakes, even though they're steel. I think they might have carbon pads or something. I don't know, they're very squeaky. But sort of adds to the drama because this car is so dramatic in every aspect. Might as well have squeaky brakes. So nice. Oh. But I do need to turn around because we've got into some village. And uh, there you go, there's a roundabout right here. Perfect, perfect time. See the turning angle of this car is one of these small roundabouts. So we'll see if we can make it in one way. Go all the way wide like this. And see if we can make oh easy. It's basically sounds like not sounds like it's got basically it's got rear wheel steering. <laughs> it doesn't. Not so ever. Nothing whatsoever. But um as you saw the turning angle is pretty good. The camber of the wheels when you do turn all the way it's quite um, aggressive so to call it so when you turn the wheels don't stay straight they go like this so it helps with navigating the road that's why it's so darty in corners because the wheels they don't just turn like that they do this they turn like sideways and lean so you have a lot of grip so the entire tire stays on the ground rather than you riding on the edge of it which is performance car stuff and no it's not just Porsche that does this or like GT4 it's a lot of cars do this but just wanted to mention anyway yeah this thing is phenomenal and I hope we can get a bit of clear road up ahead of us to uh, further enjoy this beauty as and as I said even at 35 miles an hour this thing is just uh, oh, besides the bumps <laughs> and this is in comfort comfort normal chassis because you got a normal chassis and then sport chassis jesus christ uh and this isn't comfort normal chassis so this is as smooth as it gets take it easy around here because as you can see this car is parked up i don't want a door to swing open I said my my nose is itchy I, everything's itchy in this guy I just want to go <laughs> as I said you don't need to go super fast in this thing to enjoy like granted if you're on a track and you're doing north of 100 miles an hour well to be fair on tracks you do 60 to 100 and something miles an hour um, this thing is probably so so much fun but uh, even like this even on a normal road let's lower the windows a little bit I'll shift to first. Nobody behind me. Turn on the wipers, turn on everything. It's not like that, like avoiding things in the road. It's so good. Sounds. 
can you be mad or sad or anything in this car? It's just so ridiculous. God, it pisses me off how good it is. <laughs> you hear all the noises, everything. Everything you hear. So good. Love it. And I hope the microphone here does me justice so you can hear all the good sounds. Oh, love it. Gonna turn right here. Hopefully not stay for too long. This area is always built up with traffic. Where's it going? Right. What a machine. What a machine. <laughs> I, I, I hope that my uh, excitement comes across on camera because I am so bloody excited to be driving this thing. Why are we doing uh, 15 miles an hour, sir? Oh, there's a cyclist. Of course, there's a cyclist. My uh, my love for cyclists is not particularly uh, big. <laughs> Mind you, no no beef with anybody that's cycling, but I just hate it when they're using um, B rolls like this because it's very dangerous for both them and the drivers. The 60 uh, mile an hour road. So, you know, in blind corners and whatnot, it's uh, quite tricky sometimes. But regardless, I digress. I cannot be mad or sad or annoyed or anything when I'm driving this thing. So good. Ah. I'm yet to drive the uh, 911 variant GT3 or GT3 RS if I ever get the opportunity and um, compare this to the 911. Because so far this is my only comparison. I've driven the um, 911 GTS before this and that was quite fun as well. It was a manual but the GTS was nothing like it was good but nothing to write home about. Um, whereas this it's like novelty almost. It's just so insane this car. I absolutely love it. It's basically a dream Dream driver. Is you always always reach uh, you reach traffic it's almost impossible to have a, a clean road because you always get um, get traffic because this corner is so easily it doesn't care you're just navigating this turns like it's just another just another day because it is whereas the guys in front need to break they need to slow down at these bends but you in the GT4 RS not at all. Got a wing. I'm not sure if you can hear, see in the rearview mirror. Um, you got a wing, downforce. It's got so much aero. I don't know if the aero kicks in at like 40, 50 miles an hour, but even so, the car is set up so nicely, and with the Cup Twos, it's just so beautiful to drive. Gorgeous car. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous car. I don't think I'll ever be sick of driving this thing. Or to buy one myself, I'll be out in it probably every day. It'll rinse my wallet because when you do push it, it basically the fuel just evaporates. You top it up and it's just gone in an hour, basically. <laughs> but it smiles per gallon, smiles per mile whatever you want to call it, it's just such a good car making all these noises like listen God unbelievable machine unbelievable machine and 
I'm so excited and thankful for the opportunity of driving this thing because it's such a lovely, lovely piece of kit. I'm gonna drive, turn around here at some point. It's quite a bit of traffic as always on these bloody roads. Let's go this way. Incredible machine. Incredible machine. so narrow I'm not really worried about tight roads like this because you know you can just turn <laughs> it's pretty good when it comes to that no turn you can fit driving this car on British roads is that they're super bumpy as you can uh, see <laughs> but um, yeah guys I think this concludes the uh, video I do hope you have enjoyed my review and drive of this car put up the nose lift for the speed bumps <laughs> um, hope you've enjoyed the review and drive of this car, the POV, the sounds, everything. And uh, we'll let the ambulance come through. Yes, and as I was saying, hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. And I hope I can show you uh, many, many more cars and many more videos with Porsches and whatnot. So thank you very much, guys for watching I am gonna make my way home now now we go back into London and I'll catch you guys in the next video peace out stay safe and have a good one